From the earliest days of human agriculture, when the first farmer planted the first seed in the Fertile Crescent almost 11,000 years ago, the development of crops and spread of food technology have resulted from the insights and innovations of individuals around the globe. From Dayu, the emperor who first channeled raging rivers in China to allow agricultural production, to Chanukya in India, who documented early agricultural enhancements, to Hatshepsut, the female Egyptian pharaoh who began horticultural trade. Agriculture flourished and spread, traveling over Roman roads, the Silk Road, and on Persian, Arabian, and African trade routes. In the 19th century in Europe, science leapt forward to become the multiplier of the harvest. Pasteur in France prevented germs and bacteria from spoiling food. Von Liebig and Haber and Bosch in Germany developed fertilizers. And Gregor Mendel, an Austrian monk, first identified the laws of heredity. In the United States in the 20th century, Henry A. Wallace and Norman Borlaug led enormous advances in plant science and breeding. Geneticist Barbara McClintock discovered how genes move on chromosomes during breeding and how certain genes are in fact responsible for physical characteristics. And then in 1953, the discovery of the DNA double helix by Watson, Crick, Wilkins and Franklin set the stage for agriculture to shift from the Green Revolution to the Gene Revolution. It is here that the three 2013 World Food Prize laureates began to write the next chapter in the evolution and the revolution of science and agriculture. I am particularly happy that on the 60th anniversary of the discovery of the double helix structure of the DNA molecule, three very eminent biotechnologists uh, starting with Professor Mark von Montagu and Mary Del Chilton and Robert Fraley. Uh, their work has been recognized and they will be receiving the World Food Prize. This is very appropriate because I think the science of genetic engineering, the new biology, new genetics has certainly opened up completely new opportunities. Mark von Montagu was born in Ghent, Belgium and grew up in a working class family. From an early age, physics and chemistry fascinated him. He was the first in his family to complete high school and go on to university studies. He attended Ghent University where he studied biochemistry. He earned his PhD in biochemistry and continued his own research with friend and colleague Jeff Schell. Dr. von Montagu and Jeff Schell began working with the plant disease known as crown gall and the soil bacteria, Agrobacterium tumefaciens. In nature, these bacteria infect plants. In 1974, the two scientists unlocked the mystery of how the bacteria infect plants. They proved that the bacterium actually transfers a piece of its own hereditary material to the DNA of the plant, which was a groundbreaking discovery. That DNA was located on a molecule called a plasmid and was named the T-plasmid, which stands for tumor-inducing plasmid. The scientists realized at once that they had found a messenger that would allow them to modify plants genetically. We tried to understand why a bacteria was inserting DNA in plant cells. So we did the fundamental research, found that this bacteria does gene engineering, proved that and then instead of inducing malformations on the plants, we could deliver new genes that give new properties to plants. Mary Dell Chilton, who grew up in North Carolina and Illinois, didn't take her first science class until high school in Hinsdale, Illinois. But it soon became evident that science was her calling. DNA fascinated her. And when she and her husband moved to the University of Washington in Seattle, she became involved in work to identify the cause of the crown gall disease in plants. Following the Ghent University team's discovery of the T plasmid, the puzzle remained to find the exact piece of DNA that transferred traits. Dr. Chilton, along with Milton Gordon and Eugene Nestor, constructed a brute force experiment involving everyone in their lab to, over a 48-hour period, 
test smaller pieces of the tea plasmid. They discovered that one small piece of the tea plasmid, now called tDNA, for transfer DNA, was in fact responsible for transferring the genetic information from the bacteria to the plant. They had discovered the how aspect of gene transfer. Dr. Chilton continued her molecular biology research at Washington University in St. Louis, accepting a faculty position there in 1979. Three years later, her team harnessed the gene transfer mechanism of agrobacterium to produce the first transgenic tobacco plant. In a real sense, the process that you use for genetically engineering a crop plant is a natural one. We learned it from nature. We learned it from Agrobacterium, a little bacterium that did this before we ever discovered it. All we did was learn how Agrobacterium manages to put a gene into a plant, and we copied that process. We exploited a natural process to put genes into plant cells, genes of our choice to benefit uh, the farmer and the end user of that plant. Robert T. Fraley grew up on a small Midwestern farm in central Illinois where his parents raised both crops and livestock. As a young child, Rob was fascinated about how things worked, from machinery to plants and animals, and knew early on that he wanted to spend his life exploring science. Dr. Ernie Jaworski recruited him to join Monsanto as part of a small team, including Rob Horsch and Steve Rogers, focused on developing a gene transfer system for plants. The breakthrough occurred in 1982, when the team discovered how to delete the disease-causing genes in Agrobacterium tumefaciens, but leave the transfer mechanism intact so that new genes with desirable traits could be introduced and expressed in plant cells. The plant cells could be regenerated into whole plants. In the early days, petunia and tobacco plants. And it was shown that subsequent generations would inherit the new genes in their offspring. Rob continued his work leading the Monsanto R&D team, focused on a variety of crops with the vision of widespread farmer accessibility to improved biotech seeds. The bottom line is all these farmers are using this because it works. It helps them reduce their risk to control their bugs and weeds and improve their yields. I feel really privileged and I think for me it's just the beginning of, uh, of a wave of innovation that's going to be so important for agriculture. Thirty years ago, in 1983, plant biotechnology rocketed to the forefront of the scientific world. When von Montague, Chilton and Fraley each presented the results of their independent pioneering research on the successful transfer of bacterial genes into plants and the creation of genetically modified plants at the Miami Biochemistry Winter Symposium. Since then, they have all continued to lead groundbreaking research. And today, biotech crops are grown in nearly 30 countries around the world on over 400 million acres, making biotechnology one of the most rapidly adopted new tools in the history of agriculture. Mark von Montague went on to found two biotechnology companies, Plant Genetic Systems, best known for its early work on insect-resistant and herbicide-tolerant crops, and Crop Design, a company focused on the genetic engineering of agronomic traits for the global commercial corn and rice seed markets. In 2000, he also founded the Institute of Plant Biotechnology Outreach, with the mission to assist developing countries in gaining access to the latest plant biotechnology developments and to stimulate their research institutions to become independent and competitive. Mary Dell Chilton was offered the opportunity to start the biotech arm of Siba Geigy Corporation, now known as Syngenta. She established one of the world's first industrial agricultural biotechnology programs, leading applied research in areas such as disease and insect resistance, as well as continuing to improve transformation systems in crop plants. She has spent the last three decades overseeing the implementation of the new technology she developed, 
and further improving it to be used in the introduction of new and novel genes into plants. Dr. Fraley and his team in 1996 launched the first biotech developed soybean resistant to the herbicide glyphosate known commercially as Roundup. When planting these Roundup ready crops a farmer was able to eliminate the weeds while the soybeans thrived. This was followed by the commercialization of insect protected cotton and corn. In leadership positions at Monsanto, currently as Executive Vice President and Chief Technology Officer, Dr. Fraley has played a major role in charting the course for the company's research direction, including the decision to enter the seed business that has led to access to biotechnology products for farmers around the world. The 21st century presents the single greatest challenge in human history. Can we sustainably feed the more than 9 billion people who will be on our planet by the year 2050? The answer is complex and uncertain, as we also face increasing climate volatility and the constraints of depleted natural resources. As farmers, particularly poor smallholder farmers, face drought, flooding, pests, plant diseases, and saltwater intrusion from rising seas, the scientific insights and innovations of these three individuals offer enormous hope that this greatest challenge can be overcome. For their breakthrough achievements in discovering and pioneering biotechnology, Marc von Montagu, Mary Del Chilton, and Robert T. Fraley truly deserve to be named the 2013 World Food Prize Laureates.